Coke Zero is going to damage your microbiome. Is it better to have a Coke Zero or the real thing? No, Zero. Okay. She said, is it better to have a Coke Zero or a real thing? And Glucose Goddess said Coke Zero. Okay. All right. I am hard on people because I, I value scientific rigor, but I give credit where credit is due and I give her credit. This is correct. She is correct here. But I'm assuming what is going to follow is going to be a lot of bullshit. Coke Zero. Tell us why. Because... Sweeteners, aspartame, stevia, monk fruit, maltitol, allulose, all of these sweeteners that contain zero calories. Yes, they're not good for you, right? They have consequences. They impact your microbiome. They may make you crave more. Stop! The first thing to keep in mind is that the microbiome tends to change with any dietary change. If you change your diet in any way, your microbiome will typically shift. What we don't know is whether these shifts are good, bad, or neutral. And I will say that there are several studies that show that artificial sweeteners do not change your gut microbiota. And I've done breakdowns of a lot of these and why I'm not super concerned. But I remember like in one study on sucralose where they showed a change in the microbiome, there was actually an increase in production of a species of bacteria that's associated with less body fat, better overall metabolic health, and better insulin sensitivity. And so couldn't I say that that means sucralose is good for the gut microbiome? So again, can some of these sweeteners shift your gut microbiome? It looks like it's possible. But is that a bad shift? We don't know. So I get really tired of people saying like this, basically accepting that it's true and this data is like buried in stone and like the evidence that it shifts the microbiome, I'd say weak to moderate. The evidence that that shift is bad, virtually non-existent. Make you crave more foods. They're not something good to add to your diet. Stop. They make you crave more foods. If she were correct, that would mean people who drink diet sodas versus people who drink, say, water, people who drink diet sodas would eat more food, get more calories in, and would either gain weight or not lose as much weight as people drinking water. If only we had... You guys ready for it? Human randomized controlled trials that assessed body weight, food intake with consumption of diet sodas versus water. Oh, wait, we have those. And what do they say? They actually cause a little bit more weight loss than water. In studies where they tell people to replace sugar-sweetened beverages with either diet soda or water, the research consistently shows that both groups lose weight, but the group consuming diet soda loses a little bit more weight than the group consuming water. That's not a huge difference. But if diet sodas are causing you to have cravings and eat more, then if they're eating more, but still losing more weight, that means that diet sodas are fat burners. I mean, is that what you're saying, glucose goddess? Because this data is very consistent, and the only thing that we could explain why people would eat more and still lose more weight is they must have some secret fat burning property. Spoiler alert, they don't. The research shows that their endocrine and metabolic effects are basically inert. So when they look at glycemia, insulin, hormones, post-ingestion, there's no effect of these artificial sweeteners. A recent meta-analysis concluded this, that it's basically similar to water. But, so why would people lose a little bit more weight? Because they're eating a little bit less. Why? Because if they're accustomed to consuming sugar-sweetened beverages and they replace it with water, there may still be a void where they're seeking out that sweet taste, whereas they replace with diet soda, perhaps they're not trying to seek out that sweet taste elsewhere. But her saying that you're going to have more cravings is simply not supported by any human randomized control trial data. But they are infinitely better for you than the 25 grams of real sugar in a real Coke. It's actually like 38 grams of sugar in a real Coke, I think, but whatever. Okay, this is very important for people to hear. The diet version of a soda is infinitely better for you than the real soda with the real sugar. And, and again, I agree. So we're in agreement here. You heard it here first. On this date, BioLane agreed with Glucose Goddess. Write it down. Probably going to be the only time. But not because the sugar is magically tweaking your metabolism and stuff. You can drink a 64-ounce soda and it's not going to have hardly any effect on your appetite. So it's not like people drink a big old soda and they go, well, I have 100 grams of sugar, so I'm not going to eat pasta tonight for dinner and I'm going to skip, you know, whatever other carbohydrate source. No, people drink it on top of the regular diet. So I completely agree. The easiest, the easiest switch you can make 
to lose weight is if you consume sugar sweetened beverages to eliminate those from your diet. That is one of the fastest ways you can lose weight. You're not going to lose more weight than if you eliminated a comparable amount of calories from other places. It's not magic. It's not satiating. So eliminating it, you're not going to really feel a whole lot of difference other than you're going to have a craving for that sweet taste, which you can fill with a diet soda if you need to. And there's been some talk about, oh, sweeteners are really bad. You know, they cause cancer, all this stuff. We got to relax on that. Real sugar is way, way, way more damaging than the sweeteners. We don't agree on everything, but we agree on that. She would say sugar feeds cancer and helps cancer cells grow and blah, blah, blah. And that is a popular rhetoric I hear out there. And the, the, re the reality is a lot of things help cancer cells grow. The people who are like, sugar feeds cancer. Why don't they talk about the cancers that can feed on ketones? Because those exist. Why don't they talk about the cancers that feed on amino acids like aspartate and glutamate? Because those exist too. In fact, a lot of cancers use aspartate and glutamate as fuels. You don't hear people saying, <gasps> we got to cut out amino acids from our diet. Cancer cells are very plastic and adaptable and they tend to find a way, sadly. And they do this by using a variety of fuel sources, not by being honed into one. There's this whole Warburg hypothesis out there where it's like, well, most Cancer has dysfunctional mitochondria and they can only use sugar for fuel. That's not a rule. There's plenty of cancers that can use fuels other than glucose as fuel. Now, do I think that sodas contribute to the risk of cancer? I do, because they are a large source of calories in the United States and people overconsume them. They overconsume calories and being obese drastically raises your risk of many different cancers. So yes, we agree it raises the risk of cancer and we agree that diet soda is a much better alternative I think we disagree on why, but nonetheless, I want to give her credit for actually being correct that the diet version is better than the regular soda. Because I get really tired of influencers who say shit like, don't drink diet soda. It's worse than regular soda. Oh my God. You know why they say that? Because they're trying to rile you up, get you scared. Because that's the kind of content that gets shared virally. Because it's like, it puts content in front of you that is mostly bullshit because it's extreme statements, it's black and white, it's not how scientists talk. And so what you get fed, the content that is gonna be shown to you more and more is stuff that's more likely to get you upset more likely to trigger a fear response because it's the same thing news stations do. And unfortunately, giving nuanced takes, talking about limitations, discussing how, oh, we can never really be totally sure of anything, that's not the kind of content that generates likes, clicks, and shares. It's unfortunate when people ask, why do you have to be so abrasive? Because I gotta get you to watch somehow. If y'all stopped watching dumb shit and started watching smart shit, then I wouldn't have to cuss so much. It's your fault. Now I'm gaslighting you. Bye.